Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. Um, first and foremost, apologies about my voice. I literally lost it on Monday and I've only been able to find um, bits of it. So please bear with me. Um, I'm Natalie Bradley, as mentioned. I'm a director of customer success at GitHub. I've been at GitHub for a little over four years already. Which it's crazy how time uh, flies. Um, but for about 10 years prior to joining GitHub, I worked as a technical advisor uh, for many organizations, helping them with change management, digital transformations, DevOps implementations, and even inner source initiatives. And over the years, I learned that while these initiatives are unique, they all share a fundamental theme around culture um, of the business. And that makes these initiatives either a success or a failure. So today I'm gonna share with you what makes them a success. And we all just watched Meryl's great um, keynote and I think uh, originally I was a little bit nervous going first, and now I think it kind of flows perfectly into this um, discussion about um, culture. Um, so first things first, let's level set to ensure we're all talking on the same page about what InnerSource is. InnerSource is the use of open source software development best practices and the establishment of an open source like culture within organizations for the development of its open if it's non open source and or proprietary software. What are the goals of open source? Well, the primary ones are to enable talented workforce to share, collaborate, build off other projects and resources, to have a collaboration uh, as a cultural norm, um, to facilitate the reuse of components, and ultimately really have happier engineers and developers um, build better features and build them faster. So now that we understand what it is and what our goals are, how do we get it? How do we build an inner source culture? We've all heard this, the saying, culture eats strategy for breakfast. And to be clear, Peter Drucker didn't mean to say that strategy was unimportant. Strategy for implementing anything is a critical component of success. And we'll talk more about that shortly. But no matter how well designed your strategic plan is, it will fall flat on its face unless your team shares the appropriate culture. Organization leaders today focus on strategy because it's formal logic for company goals. It orients people around those goals. It provides clarity. It helps with focus for your collective action and decision making. But the challenge with culture is that it's completely elusive, right? It's those unspoken behaviors or the mindsets or the social patterns within your organization. And it so often perplexes organizational leaders that they either let it go unmanaged or they relegate it to HR, where it then becomes a secondary concern for the business. And that's a huge mistake because when consciously managed, culture can help achieve change and build organizations that will thrive even in the most challenging situations. So culture eats strategy for breakfast. It doesn't matter what processes or tools are in place. If you don't have the culture to support them, people will work outside of those processes and tools. You need culture and strategic alignment, or else you have teams pocket veto. They'll create shadow IT. I know so many companies have pockets of excellence, but not an enterprise stature. So we need to be intentional about our, our culture the way you want around any initiative. And to do this, to influence culture and to build an inner source program, we must build a strong foundation. Use any foundation analogy uh, you can think of. I'm gonna use the standard house analogy, right? Your house isn't gonna last through your storm season without a proper foundation. Your bathrooms aren't gonna work without planned water lines, electric, septic, so on. And the same goes for inner source. It requires building blocks to create plans and changes within an organization that ultimately create the norms that become your inner source culture. These building blocks that I'm going to talk about aren't really anything new, but individually they often get overlooked and pushed for a later date. Doing them all upfront with intention at the beginning of an inner source journey builds and influences lasting culture. Okay, so what are they? First things first is strategy. This is the long-term overarching plan to meet your organization's inner source goals. We fall into policy. This is the governance and compliance piece where you're basically defining the rules of the game. 
communications all about bringing awareness consistency to your program it's helping others understand why and how you're implementing inner source and lastly but equally as important is the culture and rewards they're the building that repeatability and that normalcy to your inner source practices it's encouraging and rewarding people for doing so Culture is really an underlining um, building block in all of these pieces, but we'll touch on how to specifically focus on it to create normalcy and influence it. So let's start with strategy. And this is not to be confused with tactical plans. A lot of organizations I've worked with start with tactics, what tools, what products, or what teams, et cetera, they're gonna start with. And while that's important for execution, we wanna take a step back first. Why are we doing this? Why is our organization excited about inner source? Is it for cost savings? Are there efficiencies? Do we want to improve security or move things to production? Do we just want to be a collaborative organization? How do you plan to execute the program and who are the resources that are going to implement this plan? What are their timelines? What are the measures? What are the goals? How do we hold them accountable? And does leadership support this effort and are they willing to fund this? Leadership buy-in isn't a nice to have or a thumbs up, go, good, do, go do good work. It's an essential component to successful business strategy. And that's where prioritization of efforts will start to fall if there's no funding or prioritization for these efforts. And when push comes to shove, efforts like this will fall to the wayside without your leadership's investment. So look at the boundaries or limitations within your organization as well. Do you have lots of contractors? Do you have IP concerns? Are there sensitive projects? Do you do a lot of R&D work? Are there classification issues? These are the definite legal limitations in some organizations and what can be shared and how it can be used. So you want to understand those limitations and the boundaries. Identify them as a set of um, issues and put them aside for later. You want to work and focus on that 80% solution of the majority, the things you can work with, the change that you can impact. You can go through that 20% later. But there are also limitations that we have in every organization that's known as folk law, and it heavily affects our organizational success. Folk law isn't a rule or a law or a regulation, but more of a practice or a standard that was established way back in the day and is just the way things got done. So folk law is often the hardest hurdle to overcome, but it will have the biggest impact on change once it's established and overturned. Next is policy. Poli policy takes on the perspective of your security organizations, your legal governance and compliance teams, and ultimately your users. It's the rules of the game. You want to define the kinds of permissions, the settings that your team's going to have around code and repositories. What kind of accesses on repos um, can people see? What is your organization structure? Um, as defined in your strategy where you may have limitations, how does that get implemented as a rule or a policy? This not only helps your business peers understand how teams and individuals will function, but it also sets the groundwork for your users. So from here, you've defined your overarching strategy, you've focused on the policy and the compliance piece for your organization initiatives, and now let's talk about communications. Communications is so often pushed to the side or leveraged only when necessary. It's so important to be communicating regularly with everyone as early as possible. Your business partners, your peers, security, the users. How many times have you been in an organization where you've seen a communication around a new initiative and it's all exciting and puppy dogs and rainbows, and then maybe a few years, a few uh, months later, you hear that it's now mandatory, everybody has to do it because it hasn't been successful. That's the lack of, of communications. Information builds trust. It's not just the awareness of what you're doing, but also how. It's the transparency to your initiative that also builds interest. So people shouldn't hear about your inner source in your uh, initiatives in your organization just because it's new or because it isn't working. They should be consistently hearing about it. And it shouldn't be in a vacuum. Create newsletters or blog posts, have monthly workshops or meetups. Investing in communications is so incredibly worth it. 
look at the inner source comments. There's so much communications and activities going on. It's the place you know to go to to find information about inner source. But if you feel that you don't have enough info in your um, organization to consistently send out about inner source, make up communications about your development practices, about your tools, about features your teams have created, security updates. What you're ultimately doing is actually building your culture towards one of openness, trust, and transparency. You're creating communications as a norm, not as an exception. And your teams will start to have their eye out for this information and know where to look to get more info about your inner source goals. So lastly, but as important, is culture and rewards. All of these building blocks are shifting your culture in and of themselves, but there are some things you need to build in order to make it normal. And this is where things like training and learning paths come into play. Training doesn't exactly sound like culture, I know, but if you think about your yearly training at your company, those are the things that your company really cares about. So by adding your initiative as training, it's showing people within your organization that inner source and collaboration is a business practice. It's a large part of how you build software and it is important enough to create a refresher for it or a learning path, whichever option you choose but make collaboration practices part of onboarding, whether it be training or an actual activity. I've seen a lot of organizations successfully require new hires to review a document, to submit a PR for a fix or an inconsistency on someone else's project. It's something that not only defines what your inner source initiatives look like, but it also gets them to participate in the behavior. And the earlier people do these activities in their role, they learn that it is not just okay to do, but it's encouraged and expected. A rewards. Rewards will significantly help build the groundwork to get people to participate. And very importantly, rewards show your organization's commitment. You have a strategy, you have the rules of the game, you've communicated these things to your teams, and you give them opportunities to learn and engage in this new culture and get rewarded for their involvement. This is commitment. And there are lots of ways to reward your teams. It doesn't have to be money. Let's be serious. Nobody's gonna argue if you do give them money, but people wanna do cool things and they love to talk about it. So think about those pockets of excellence that every company has. Those teams love what they are doing and they love to talk about it. It's motivating and inspiring for others and learning from your peers is such an awesome way to build talent. So these are the building blocks that create a solid foundation for lasting inner source culture, um, inner, inner lasting cultural change. And as I mentioned earlier, they really aren't anything new, but individually they're overlooked or pushed to a later date. Um, it's taking a look at each of these components and how they intersect and influence the cultural change. It's an iterative process, it's continuous improvement. Check in with each of these steps as you grow through your endeavor. Check in with your strategy to see if your execution is matching your goals or your rules are the right ones for the game that your users are playing. Are they working for the majority? Are you communicating enough that your teams know why and how you're doing this? And are the rewards impactful enough? Are you starting to see this new implementation become a little bit more normal? And that's really it. If you build it, they will come. If you build it right, it will last for years. But one last thing um, that I don't want you to forget is that inner source really is a cultural transformation that requires building blocks to make the elusive behavior shift. So be patient. This won't be overnight. Be consistent. Nail down your purpose and initiatives and communicate it. And always, always celebrate even the smallest of wins. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, my last slide isn't moving. Um, this is my uh, contact information. If anybody has any questions, definitely drop them into the Slack or um, reach out. Appreciate it.